I'm Callie and welcome to Kapowski Reads and this is my February TBR and this game is in full beta mode so I am just working out all of the sort of little tweaks that need to be made before I can feel confident to draw on the actual board that I have. For now I'm using a piece of paper in the lid of a chocolate box. If you would like to know more about how the game is played I will add the first video which was last month in the description and I do talk about the mechanics of the game a little bit more but I'm gonna be sort of amending that as we go because well it's a new game so there's gonna be little things that need changed and updating. So for my first pick for February it is based on whether I did or did not finish my TBR for January. If I finish I get to read the book that is highest rated on my TBR. If it if I don't finish my January TBR, then I read the book that's at the lowest of my Goodreads TBR. And this is where we hit our first snag in this game, which is the reason it's in beta, because I don't know if I have finished all of the books in my January TBR. It's not the end of the month yet. It's the 21st of January. It's just I've got time to film just now, so I'm going to. And I do still have a little bit left of my January TBR to complete, but I am super confident that anything that I need to read and haven't read will get read. So I'm thinking that that means that I get to take the sort of highest book from my TBR, which would be The Ministry of Unladylike, of Unladylike Activity by Robin Stevens. And this book I keep getting the title wrong. So yes, Ministry of Unladylike Activity. That's that's definitely the, the title. I think I was given it all sorts of titles last time I mentioned it. And this book is basically about a, an organisation of, of children who are going out solving crimes. It sounds definitely my kind of thing. And it is a bit hefty for a, well, I think it's a middle grade book. So that's interesting. So I'm excited to see what goes on with this, but I have a concern because I feel like I have finished slash will finish everything in my January TBR, but I had a DNF. So what do I do about DNFs? I don't know. That's what I need to think about. Uh, if I think of a DNF as having tried the book and just gone, nah, it's not for me, putting it down, then I would view that as I've tried it, that counts. But there's part of me that goes, well, if I try, if I DNF'd it, then I didn't read it. So then it's not complete. I would need to read The Lock-In by Phoebe Lockhurst, which is about some people that find themselves locked in an attic together and it turns out that they know each other. So I'm sort of interested to find out what what happens there. The cover has this gorgeous keyhole on it but it means that it's gotten damaged along the way which very much upsets me. But yeah, so what do you think? If a book is a DNF, do I count it as having tried it and then I can take the sort of reward? Or if I DNF the book, do I automatically fail to read my TBR? and therefore have to take the punishment. Enough housekeeping, let's go on to the game. So I roll the dice six times, and if I roll a double, I roll again. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. So roll one was a white coloured prompt and that was a book that wasn't set in the UK or the USA. So I've gone with The Wilderness Retreat by Jennifer Moore which takes place in Sweden and I... right, I'm really bad for getting books on NetGalley, forgetting about them, going back to them and having no idea what they're about. That's what's happened here and this book is about a woman who goes off to a retreat in Sweden. Her son has left home for, for university I think she's feeling a little bit lost. So that's sort of her, you know, treat yourself kind of 
activity. So she heads off to this retreat and there's like a local legend about a, a ghosty. And then suddenly she starts receiving all of these letters that are kind of threatening and secrets of her past come out. Very much intrigued by this. I've been let down by a few thrillers recently so I am looking forward to seeing what happens with this. I'm kind of hoping it's going to be a little bit creepy and I do love a book with a woodland setting and that's kind of what I'm getting from this cover anyway. One, two, three, four, five. Cover matches my outfit. Rule two was a green prompt, which was a book that matched my outfit. And I rolled the dice yesterday. So I have to go based on what I was wearing at the time I did the roll. That sounds right. Uh, I was wearing a navy blue dress with cream polka dots. Do not get me started on how sad I am that those polka dots are cream and not white because it very much just messes with my eyes. And I struggled. I actually really struggled to find a book that I hadn't read that had navy, like a dark blue at least, and cream on the cover. Because it looks like I read most of those in January. But the closest book that I had that kind of matched what I was wearing was The Winter Garden by Alexandra Bell. And... As a second role, this book put the fear into me because it's a beast. It's quite chunky. It's 500 pages and I'm a little worried because my TBR is already, it, it's, it's over a thousand pages so far, but I really want to read this and I wanted to pick this up in January but just didn't really have the time and this is about it's kind of like a, a somewhat little fantasy edge to it where people there's a competition to create a garden and whoever makes the most magical garden and I think magical is the word I want here wins a, a wish but they have to make a sacrifice not sure what that is yet in order to get the wish so I mean I think I'm gonna just love the bones of this so while I am quite concerned that I've picked a hefty boy I think I'm gonna love it I think I'm gonna very much love this so yeah it'll be all good six one two three four five six get pink one favourite author. For rule three I got pink which was to pick a book by a favourite author. So I went with Partners in Crime by Agatha Christie which is my February pick for Reed Christie and this is a Tommy and Tuppence story which I think involves poison because that is the theme for February I, I'm fairly certain and this is just about a, a duo that take over a detective agency and it's quite short so I actually feel much better now after picking a big big book last time and I've not read a lot of Tommy and Tuppence books I think I've only read the short stories so I'm very excited to go into this not really knowing too much about it other than murder mystery it's gonna be good One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A to Z random number generator. I clearly mean random letter generator. For rule four, I got a white prompt, which was a, well, I had written random number generator, but I think I meant random letter generator. So I did a random letter generator and I got the letter Q. Q. Um. I only have one book that starts with the letter Q if we discount the word the at the beginning and I'm going to because otherwise I had nothing. So I have gone with The Quantum Curators and The Fabergé Egg by Eva St. John. This is a book that has just sat on my Kindle for years. I don't even know where, I mean I know where I got it from, it's a 
Kindle book. There's only so many places it could have come from. But I don't know when I got it, why I got it, how long it's been there, but it's there. I need to read it. This book is about searching for a Fabergé egg on another world. There's a curator, I assume at a museum maybe, who has to go and find this Fabergé egg, but she knows it's not on, on her world. So she has to go elsewhere to get it. Meanwhile, there's somebody else who's trying to find this Fabergé egg. And in all honesty, I think I got this book because it had Fabergé egg in it. And growing up in the 90s, I really expected Fabergé eggs would have been a greater part of my adulthood. <laughs> this is going to be a kind of like a, a quest sort of book. My fear is that I have been told it's somewhat similar to The Chronicles of St Mary's by Jodie Taylor. And that's a series I have since given up on because I read a few back to back that I absolutely hated. But I've also read a whole bunch of them that I absolutely loved. So I'm hoping it's going to take after the ones that I loved. Six, roll five. One, two, the lap. So we have a lap roll. to the pick. Feels like a half lap, really. Where were they? Two, three, four, five, six. Green. A green cover. Rule five was a green prompt, a book with a green cover. So I've gone with The Dinner List by Rebecca Serrell. And this book is, I, I bought this ages and ages ago because it just sounded so just silly and fun and it is about a dinner party where somebody's having their their dream dinner party you know when people ask oh if you could have a dream dinner party and invite anybody dead or alive who would you have this is what that book is about and her guests include her um deceased father and audrey hepburn as well as a i think a teacher and an ex-partner so a whole big mix and i just think that this is going to be i think this is going to be somewhat heartwarming but also somewhat chaotic and I'm just, I'm intrigued. So looking forward to this fun. I've wanted to read this for a while, but I haven't just, haven't been able to make time for it. I'm going to now. Nope, it's not last roll, 12. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Unseasonal read. Roll six is an unseasonal read, which was a yellow prompt and I'm going with Untamed Shores by Silvia Moreno Garcia. And this book is about a young woman who becomes an assistant to this couple who are in her hometown visiting. A uh, death takes place and the young woman lies to the police and then suddenly reveals happen and people might not be quite who they first seemed. I have read seven books by Silvia Moreno Garcia and it could be eight and I have never given her less than four stars for a book maybe like a 3.75 or a 3.5 rolled up but I feel I feel I'm always in for a good time she's an autobi author of mine and I'm so excited about this book five one two three four five six seven eight nine ten green again a black cover. I have one extra roll which ended up with a green prompt and that was a book with a black cover. So I'm going with Dread Nation by Justina Ireland and this book has the best quote in the front which is ass kicking and delicious. Need I say more? <laughs> I mean what, what better endorsement could you have? This is about a school for girls for for black girls who are taught in both etiquette and weaponry and there's a zombie outbreak and I just I'm not usually a zombie girl but I I am a women kicking butt girl so very excited about this this the book does come to me quite highly recommended and I have seen this a few places on booktube 
which made me very happy because I like seeing, I like knowing if other people have enjoyed books or if people haven't enjoyed books, what is their reading like when compared to my own? Could I love it? So very excited about this, even though it is going to have zombies and I'm not usually into zombies. I did also make one lap of the board. I mean, I didn't. I decided to go some weird way that just resulted in me passing the start again, which means that I then have to add a book, which was a book that I have seen an, on booktube in the last two weeks. Don't know why I decided to go some weird way around the board, but here we are. I ended up going with Bunny by Mona Awad and I saw this book on Robin Reed's Best and Worsts of 2022. This was one of her bests, so I'm very excited about this. And to be honest, I have seen people talking about Bunny for ages and I just thought it was a scary book. I don't know why I thought it was a scary book. Maybe it is. And I just sort of went, oh, maybe not for me. This book is about a young woman who sort of finds her way to infiltrate this real, really creepy sounding clique where they sort of all seem to be one person. So I'm excited, but also scared. So let's see how I get on with this. I'm not usually a scary book person either, but in a month where I'm reading a zombie book, why not throw in something scary? Just go out of my comfort zone. So those are all of my picks for my TBR game. But I do have some other books that I wanted to fit in. Um, so I've got Kayla's buzzword and the buzzword for February is a uh, verb. And I'm going with Lost in a Good Book by Jasper Ford, which is the second book in the Thursday Next series. And I started that series 2021, I think. I love that book, but the second book didn't read it. So <laughs> I'm going to read it now. And the entire series is about Thursday Next, who is a woman that works in an agency where they basically go into books and solve crimes, stop crimes really. It kind of gives me Doctor Who vibes of like moving through different realities. And I believe that this book involves somebody trying to get up to no good in Shakespeare's works. So Thursday has to go into Shakespeare and stop it very very bizarre series but I'm very invested in the character and I love the first book so I think I'm gonna love the next one. So this is my TBR for February. Um, It will be one of these books at the bottom depending on depending on how we feel about whether I have or have not read my January TBR. I think I did. Yeah totally did. DNFs count Um, and a few ebooks as well. I'm really looking forward to this TBR. I feel like I've got a good mix on it plus a few books that take me out of my comfort zone as well which is always terrifying yet ends up usually being for the best. I'd love to know what your reading plans are for February. Uh, let me know in the comments and thank you for watching. Bye!